Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets back with another video tutorial on C++ programming. So in this video tutorial, we'll be discussing the topic of class templates. Now in the previous video tutorial, we covered the topic of function templates and we saw the theory on function templates as well as we saw a programmatical example. So if you have missed that video tutorial, you can check it out and you can see a link on the top right corner. So go check that video out if you don't know what function templates are because we've extensively covered the topic. And if you are new on this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of video tutorials on this channel and and more are coming soon so you'll get notified whenever i upload a new video tutorial and for that just turn on the notifications as well so with that being said let's get started with today's topic Okay, so what are templates in C++? Now, if you've seen the previous video tutorial, we've already covered the theoretical aspect, but let's just take a quick recap in this video tutorial as well. So templates is a simple and yet powerful tool in C++ and what it does is it helps us in generic programming. So you can see point number two, templates are foundation of generic programming and what generic programming is, is that it involves writing a code in which it is independent of any particular type and by type, I mean it's data type. So template is a blueprint or a formula for creating a generic class or a function. Now there are two types that is the function template and class template so in the previous tutorial we covered function template so in this tutorial we'll extensively cover what a class template is and we'll also see a programmatical example so make sure you watch this video till the end because then you'll get a very clear idea okay so let's move on to class template so sometimes you need a class implementation that is same for all classes and only the data type used is different so normally what would you do is you'll create a different class if there are different data type members in that class or you'll create different member variables inside the same class and different functions functions within a single class which makes it a little cluttered. So in class templates what we do is we write a class that can be used for different data types using this template functionality. So just to give you a visual representation, here's an example you can see there are two classes class tag and class tag with the same name but inside this we have an integer data member array and here we have character data member array but just because both of these are different we had to write this class definition two times and probably with a different name in actual coding but you can see it is performing the same basic task that is it has push and pop functions and by the way stack is a data structure which stores data in a first in last out format so it's a part of data section and we haven't yet covered that entire topic but just for reference and just for the knowledge you can see that just because the data type of the data member is different we have to probably create two different classes so to overcome this kind of functionality or to overcome this kind of problem a template class can be used so how does that look and let's try to see that in terms of a program so let's go to the programming part now Okay, so quickly open up your AC++ ID and type the program along with me and I would recommend that you type out the code because that will give you the best practice. So now let's try to create a template class. So the syntax is that we have to first initially include this keywords. So we have to write template. In angular bracket we have to write type name. And then give a type name holder or data type holder. So this T is an alias name which will hold the data type. And then the regular class definition. So I'll say class. Let's create a class named wait to keep it simple. Just create one data member. So in the private part, I'll just create T kgs. So the data member has a data type of T. So this T is defined over here and this is going to be resolved in the main function when we actually create the object. So I'll tell you how, how that goes. Let's just first create this class in the public part. I'll just create two functions. I'll say void set data in that I'll pass an argument tx and then I'll set the kg is equal to x. So you can notice that again the data type of this x variable which is passed as an argument is also t because the data members data type is also t and this is a generic data type and let's create one more function I'll say t get data. In this function we will just return the kg data member variable. Let's just save this and now in the main function what we will do is will create an object so I'll say wait obj1 but here we have to add one more extra bit of information so in the angular brackets I have to pass the data type which is going to be held by this t value so first I'll say int so I just created an object and passed in the data type so here we are passing the data type as well so the data member kg inside this object one is going to be of integer data type so let's try to set the value I'll say obj1 dot set data and inside this I'll pass 5 so 5 is integer variable integer number now I'll say see out value is colon and then I'll say obj1 dot get data which will just return the value and directly print it out in the output on the output screen 
I'll say and L. let's try to save this let's go to execute compile and run let's see if this works so there you go you can see the output value is 5 so this class template worked successfully and we did not get any error so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more object but in this case what I'm going to pass in as the data type is I'm going to say double so the data member kg inside this object 2 that I just created is going to be of double type so again the same thing I'll just copy paste this over here and inside the set data I'm going to pass a double value which would have a floating point number and just while printing I'll just change the name so I'll say obj2 just save this and let's try to run this now so there you go now you can see value is 5.4534 so whatever double value that we passed so it was a fractional part so we had a decimal point but since the data member inside obj2 is a double type it can hold this value so now you can see that using a single class that is class weight just by making this data type generic I could create two objects of the same class but they hold different data type data members so this is the power of template classes wherein just creating one class we can create objects holding data members of different data types so if you want you can also add one more data type I can say u and inside this I can say u grams so inside data I can pass u y and in here I can say grams is equal to u or y and here I can say get kg data and then I can return over here you get gram data and I will say return gram so here I can say int and double and then while set data I can pass 5 and 0 0.53 then I can individually retrieve those values so I will say value of kg is I can say obj1 dot get kg data copy and paste this line one more time over here I can say value of gram is obj1 dot get gram data just save this let me just erase this out first let's save this and let's try to run this I'll say compile and run okay the data member is grams so I just made a typo over here just add an s over here save this go to execute compile and run and there you go you can see value of kg is 5 value of gram is 43 Okay, it should be 0 0.53 what is what I wanted to pass. Let me just execute this once more. Okay, yeah, value of gram is 0 0.53. So this works with multiple data types as well. So you can see and it is not compulsory that you have generic data types also. So that is your class can have a regular data member also. So I can say int a or double y or something like that it is not necessary that all of the data members have to have this generic type and then you can customize this cl class according to your needs so this was just a basic example of how template classes can be beneficial so that you don't have to create multiple classes to perform the same activity so yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the concept of class templates and how they can provide us an advantage wherein you don't have to create the class multiple times just to hold different data members so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel make sure you subscribe to this channel because you'll get notified whenever i upload the next video tutorial so yeah i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace